Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Xavier Bresson, and I'm going to talk about image processing, differential equations, and graph neural networks. Um, I want to thank the organizers um, of the workshop uh, for the invitation. So Richard Baranyuk, uh, Stan Osher, Anima, Anna Kumar, uh, Annie Meshgarg, Bao Wang, and Tan Nguyen. So thank you so much for the invitation uh, to this virtual workshop. Um, so this is the outline of my talk. So first, I'm going to give um, a personal history of uh, differential equation in image processing and neural networks. Then I will introduce a nonlinear diffusion uh, equation in image processing called peronamalic model. Um, then I will show that graph neural network can be seen as a learnable differential equations. Um, I will give you some applications, and then I will conclude. So let me start with the history of uh, differential equation in image processing and neural networks. So roughly speaking, differential equations have had a huge impact in scientific computing with a great success in, in image processing. So uh, differential equations offer uh, strong and interpretable uh, results. So for example, uh, so you all know Navier-Stokes equation um, for fluid uh, dynamics. Uh, Schrodinger equation for quantum state and Maxwell for electromagnetism. Um, so mathematics uh, are uh, ordinary differential equation, partial differential equation, calculus of variation, functional analysis, optimal transport, optimal control, and differential geometry. So very strong uh, domains. Um, neural networks, so there has been a revolution in machine learning since uh, 2012 with the emergence of big data and computational hardware. So they have less interpretable uh, in terms of feature learn, but they have a very strong generalization property. Uh, mathematics uh, uh, rely on stochastic optimization, linear algebra, high dimensional function, approximation, and statistics. So let me introduce you now two timelines. Um, the first timeline is going to be uh, image processing and differential equations. And the second timeline is going to be neural network. Um, so as I said before, um, differential equations have been very successful in scientific computing and, and particularly in um, image processing. So actually, they have been uh, very successful. And so they are here what I show um, in this uh, first part of the timeline are the, the milestone uh, papers, works uh, using differential equation in image processing. And they have been very, um, they have been, they have been uh, applied a lot uh, in image processing um, for all the fundamental, you know, problems in this domain. So, for example, starting with optical flow by Horn and Schnook uh, in '81. Then there was a scale space by Witkin, which is a continuous uh, multi-resolution of images. Then there have been, um, you know, uh, the nonlinear diffusion technique for image denoising by Peronai Malik. Uh, moon Forsha introduced an image segmentation model. And later, there was introduction of the uh, important bounding variation space and gamma convergence tool to prove uh, existence and, and solution of uh, differential equations. Um, in 88, uh, there was the introduction of level set method by Osher uh, and Sitian. So very influential um, in um, uh, you know, in, um, in, in fluid dynamics, for example, to represent spatial effects uh, in, uh, in, Hollywood, uh, in Hollywood movies. Um, <clears throat> then there was also introduction of shock filter by Osher and Rudin uh, to denoise um, uh, images. And um, also the, the famous total variation uh, model by Rudin, Osher, and Fatimi. So this model was actually used uh, to reconstruct um, the picture, the first picture of the black hole uh, next year, uh, last year. And that was also uh, in, uh, in 2006, the introduction of compressed sensing by Duno, Condes, Sandberg, and Dao, which using, you know, uh, concept of differential equations and also uh, optimization. So uh, there has been, you know, a very successful. So this model has been very successful for three decades. Okay, so at the same time, there was also uh, the timeline of neural network um, with here uh, some um, uh, key, um, uh, key papers like backpropagation for a neural network introduced by Hinton and, 
his collaborators, uh, the recurrent neural network of LSTM by uh, Oschreiter and Schmidhuber, uh, Covnet by uh, Lukun, Botu, and Bengio. And there was also the formalization of stochastic gradient descent by Botu and Bousquet. And, and then the, the famous Alex Ned by Hinton and his uh, students. And, and now what we have seen actually the last, uh, the last five years, uh, I would say, we have seen some more hybrid uh, techniques. So for example, in image processing, um, people have, have, have used uh, deep learning. So um, two, uh, uh, two influential papers are uh, UNET, which is for medical image segmentation and fast RCNN for object uh, detection. In, uh, in neural network, there was the introduction of uh, a very influential uh, ResNet, which is a discretized ODE, and also GAN, uh, which offer you know, a coupled uh, differential equation to find um, the saddle point of, uh, of an energy. So what we see is basically now we have um, the two timelines are starting to converge to each other. So there are there have been recently more and more um, uh, works to integrate you know knowledge from differential equation to neural networks uh, and so on. So uh, this is what I think that this uh, workshop is uh, is uh, is very uh, timely and very important to uh, make the state of uh, you know the integration of uh, differential equation and neural networks. Okay. So uh, what I say is obvious, but uh, differential equation and neural networks are very tight connections. So this is known as at least from, uh, from Le Kuhn and Hinton, uh, where they introduced the concept of continuous time recurrent nets. So we know uh, now more and more uh, how to interpret those nets in the context of differential equation. We know this is a forward Euler discretization of nonlinear ODEs with, that can be analyzed with uh, traditional transport equations. Uh, with some uh, recent work by Wang Yuan, Xi, and Osher. And they can also be solved by a uh, standard ODE solver uh, with the recent work of uh, Chen uh, Rubanova, Betancourt, and Jibno, and so on and so on. Uh, so the fundamental questions uh, when you want to do uh, this integration is basically how do we introduce differential equation into neural network to get a new architecture, OK? Uh, how do we approximate differential equation with neural network? And this is very important. So for example, in chemistry, if you want to uh, analyze molecule to get property, if you use differential equation, then it's going to take a long time. But if you use neural network, then you can learn uh, to predict the property of, of these molecules and you can, you can be much faster. And the same also in physics. So this is a way to uh, accelerate you know, um, uh, differential equations. How do we interpret neural network with differential equations. So we know differential equations have strong interpretability uh, properties. So we can use that you know, uh, to better understand neural networks and also to analyze them better. How do we use differential equations to improve neural networks? So to get better performance, better stability, better robustness, uh, faster uh, you know, learning rate, and maybe low memory um, because GPUs memory are, are, are limited. So my goal uh, for this talk is to leverage nonlinear uh, differential equation for image processing to define a graph uh, neural network architecture. So let me now introduce um, nonlinear diffusion equations in image processing. So probably in image processing, the most fundamental problem is image denoising. So the idea is you have a noisy image, okay, which is here, and you want to remove the noise uh, from, from, from this image. So uh, a naive idea would be, OK, so what I want to do is basically I want to smooth out the noise. OK, I want to, to have a way to, to diffuse uh, the noise. So what you will use, you will use something uh, simple like a linear or isotropic diffusion model. OK, so you have here the energy, which is the Dirichlet energy, which is basically you just want to minimize uh, the square of the gradient of your, of your image. If you use a calculus of variation, you will end up with uh, this uh, partial differential equation, so the derivative of h with respect to t is equal to minus the Laplacian operator uh, applied to h and with some initial value. So if you if you run the flow, so this t equal to zero, but you get to t1 and t2, you see that you are going to remove the noise in the homogeneous region, okay, and the white region and the black region, but you are going to lose the image discontinuities, the edges, okay. So you want to, to, to design um, a, a diffusion process which is going to preserve uh, aging during uh, diffusion. So Peron Amalik uh, proposed to introduce an anisotropic diffusion 
process. So the idea is we are going to weight the Dirichlet energy by a diffusivity function, okay, which is which is uh, which is given here. And the diffusive diffusivity function is actually a nature detector. And when you compute the uh, when you apply the calculus of variation to compute the minimum of this energy, you will end up with these partial differential equations. So you will have the divergence operator uh, applied to your diffusivity function times the gradient of, of h. Okay. And you see that this time, uh, if you run the flow um, at time uh, t2, you will basically uh, smooth the noise in the homogeneous part, okay, and you will preserve the discontinuities. Okay. So, so as I said, differential equations can be uh, interpretable. And, and here we have an analysis of two cases, basically. So the case where um, your gradient of your, of your denoise uh, function h is small. So this is a case when you are you know, in the homogeneous region, like the white region and the black region. When you are in this uh, region uh, of the image, then, then the gradient of h is almost 0. So basically, your w is 1. When your W is 1, it just means that you have divergence of the gradient, which is nothing else than the Laplacian operator. So what you have, you have actually um, an isotropic diffusion process. So you are just going to smooth um, the intensity by taking the average value uh, inside, uh, inside the, the neighborhood. Okay, So you will do that. And then inside, so it means that in the homogeneous regions, you just do isotropic diffusion, and you will smooth out the noise. When now you are when you when you are at the uh, discontinuities, so at the edge uh, between homogeneous regions, then the gradient will be large. Okay, when the gradient is large, let's say infinite, then it means that the W would be zero. If the W is zero, it just means that you don't have any more this term. This term is zero, and you stop the diffusion. Okay, so basically you preserve the discontinuity inside your image. Okay. Okay, so this was the continuous uh, differential equation. Now uh, we need to implement it, so we need to discretize it. So this is the role of numerical analysis. There is um, the, um, the amazing book by, by Joachim Verkeit uh, that, that, that gives all this um, numerical analysis. So here we are going to simplify the model. We are not going to consider 2D. We are going to consider only 1D for simplicity. So let's first discretize you know, the linear uh, diffusion uh, process, uh, this one. So first, we are going to do a forward Euler discretization. So uh, h uh, t plus 1 minus h t divided by some time step is equal to the Laplacian uh, at time t. So the Laplacian at time t can be discretized um, by this equation. Okay. So here, what we just use, we use the Laplacian is equal to the divergence operator applied to the gradient operator. And for the discretization of the gradient operator, is going to be um, uh, Oops, uh, yeah, it should be h uh, i plus 1. There is a mistake. h i plus 1 minus h i. And the divergence of p should be um, p i minus p i minus 1. Sorry for the, uh, for the typo. And this, um, this uh, definition is to satisfy, you know, um, the divergent theorem, which is, which is here. Okay. So basically, uh, what you see is that to get the discretization of the Laplacian at time, um, uh, for for to get the decision to get the discretization of the Laplacian at time t, we are going to use the information on the left uh, side multiplied by minus one, and the right side multiplied by minus one. Okay, minus one and minus one, and then we are going to use the central information multiplied by two, which is here. Okay, this is how we discretize. Uh, we can also discretize the nonlinear isotropic peronomalic model. Okay, so uh, this time we have diff diff diffusivity uh, function. And, but we apply the same definition for the divergence operator and the gradient operator, and we get this. So this time, we are just going to change this part. So we are going to use the left part, but we are going to multiply the left part by the diffusion function um, located at i minus 1. Okay? And here, this is a diffusion function located at i, and the same here. So you see this, this time, um, the, this function will change depending on the position in your image. Okay. Uh, oops. Now, what I, what I, what I want to, uh, to say, which is something which is probably obvious, is that um, a differential equation flow, so for when, you, when you roll out the time, t equal to 0, 1, 2, and so on, can be interpreted as a neural network with parameters, wt, which are non-learnable. 
Okay, they are just given by an analytical uh, expression. And here, the time t is simply, you know, the index of the layer inside the neural network. And we can see that it's quite easy. So um, the output image at time t plus one is the function using the diffusivity function at the previous time applied to h at the previous time. Okay, h t again can be uh, this expression, so it can be replaced here. And you see that basically you have a compositional function that you apply to your input image, which is the noisy image. So this is really the standard structure of a neural network. Okay, now let me show you that a learnable differential equations is actually a graph neural network. So as I said that the peronomalic uh, flow as a structure of a neural network, but the weights are not learned. They are given by um, an analytical expression, which is this one, which is just an edge detector. So the, the natural equation is, can we turn this differential equation into a neural network? Uh, so can we learn the W such that the flow will be noisy image? And the answer is obviously yes. So if you give uh, a collection of clean and noisy image, uh, then what you can do is that you can have this loss. So basically the denoise image, so the output of your uh, neural network minus the clean image and the uh, input, uh, and then yeah, the input of your neural network is simply the noisy image. And what you're gonna do is that you are going to minimize with respect to uh, all W at a different time. And you can do that by back propagation. So this is very obvious. It has been used in many papers. Um, so, so what we do is basically to turn uh, the peronomalic into um, uh, a learnable neural network is basically we are going to replace the, uh, the diffusivity function here at uh, the location i minus one and the location i plus one, the location i, by simply, you know, uh, learnable parameters uh, that here I call a, okay? Uh, in this case, the number of parameters will be the size of your image, so the number of pixels uh, of your image. So I can, um, I can have a vectorial representation of this, so uh, I can put all um, elements of the image inside a long vector, and I have h t plus one minus h t, and then A can be, you know, um, arranged as a matrix time H of T, okay? Uh, so here I'm going to introduce a nonlinear activation like a ReLU uh, because I want to avoid the network to collapse to one linear layers. And you see that uh, when you do a differential equation, so the residual connection naturally appears. Uh, it's, it's, it's already there. Okay. So how now can I go from uh, learning a flow uh, on an uh, image domain to learning a flow on graphs. So um, image lie on a regular lattices, okay, like this. This is a very regular lattices. And it has, a, it has you know, the node has some ordering, um, which is always preserved for all images. So basically we know uh, what is the left, um, in, the left uh, node, uh, which is this one, and the right node. So we have the, always the notion of left, right, whatever the position inside the image. And we have also the, the notion of up and down, the same. So basically, the image orientations are very well uh, defined geometric quantities. But it's not the same case for graphs. For graphs, we don't have such ordering structure. Okay, this is a graph, this is the node i, they are the neighbors, j. You can have uh, three neighbors, but you can have, you know, 15 neighbors. And then the notion is, where is the center on the graph? And what are the direction of the graph? Where is up, down, left, and right? We don't have this notion anymore. Um, and still, you know, we, so because of that, we need to make the flow invariant by node re re reparameterization. What it means is that you know that each node on the graph has some index. So for example, this is index 11. And, and, but it's completely arbitrary. You can change the index. You can have index 122, for example, but you still want to you know your equation to be valid. And you don't want to you know for each, um, for each neighbor, to uh, find, like, to have a matching process to, uh, to, um, to match the index together. You don't, you don't want that. So the simplest thing you can do uh, to design um, a neural network on graph um, is basically to uh, get all the same learnable uh, parameter to your neighbor, okay? So you're, go you're going to learn B of T, which has, you know, it's a shareable parameter uh, for all neighbors, okay? So you will use that and you do the sum of all um, neighbor features times B of T. Uh, for the central node, I, so you can use a learnable parameter A of T, okay? 
But this is this is completely isotropic. It means that you don't really look at you know some direction on your graph. And peronamalic and also uh, other technique in differential equation for image processing, you know they know that direction is very important. So the question is how do you get back you know directions uh, inside inside your graph? So you need to find a way to differentiate uh, different neighbors. So this is what we proposed um, uh, in a in a in a paper in a paper, uh, ICLR uh, 2018. So what we propose is that we are going to learn, um, you know, uh, different weights depending on the neighbor. And the weights here are given by eta ij, okay? And eta ij is also um, part of the neural network, uh, which just gonna use, you know, the, the feature at node i and the feature at node j, okay? And a, uh, B and C are learnable parameters. So suddenly you have a discretized coupled PDEs, uh, differential equations with learnable coefficient. And this is, this is quite powerful actually. Um, this is very generic and you can learn many uh, good representation of that aligning graph to solve multiple tasks. So quickly, um, some, because I'm running out of time. So some applications are, uh, we did, Molecular graph generation, combinatorial optimization, optimization, and we also did benchmarking to see how good you know is this model compared to the uh, to the literature. So for the graph regression task, so for example, we have a molecule and we want to generate some uh, molecular uh, structure. Um, then we see that uh, it's not as good as the best one, but it has some good performance. We did that also for graph classification task, and we show that for um, for the um, Super pixel uh, graph of MNIST and CIFAR, we are going uh, pretty good job. The same also for non classification. So, for example, you want to do semi uh, supervised graph classification. You, you have one label for each community and you want to identify the communities. So, we show that we, we get some good performance. This is also for pattern recognition. We have this uh, pattern graph, we embed in, in a larger graph and we want to be able to uh, identify it. So we are not the best, but we are, we are going some, some good performance. The same also for combinatorial optimization. The idea is to predict um, age, uh, which is part or not, or, or not of the TSP solution. So this model is doing a very great job because it has this extra anisotropic uh, you know, property. Uh, yeah, by the way, so a short announcement that we will do a deep learning, uh, a workshop on deep learning and combinatorial optimization. Uh, in uh, next year, and hopefully it's going to be a physical uh, workshop with uh, Peter Bataglia, uh, Stephanie Jigelka, uh, Jan Lecoun, Andrea Lodi, Stan Osher, Oriol Vignan, and Max Welling. Conclusion, so we leverage differential equation in image processing to design graph neural networks. It is obvious that uh, differential equation will be helpful to design better graph neural networks. Uh, there, are, there are many um, domains that we can, we can use uh, to improve graph neural networks. Maybe the next question, which is important in, in practical uh, sense, is how do we use the differential equation to make graph neural network more robust against adversarial attacks on graph? So that's very important. You know, you want an automatic system that is going to detect when you, you have bad influence on, on, uh, on social networks. You know, this is also for differential privacy on graph. Uh, one important question is how do we learn on large graphs? So multigrid uh, coming from differential equation might be a very powerful uh, technique to do that. And what I want to say is that we need to be very careful with, with graph neural networks is that they are sometimes very too generic. So we need more inductive bias. So for example, if you want to do molecule prediction like protein uh, folding uh, as well, then we need more. We need, and this, uh, this more can be, you know, a structure coming from differential equation like, you know, Schrodinger for a quantum chemistry task. Um, okay, I want to thank my collaborators. So Yoshua Benjo, uh, Thomas Lawrence, Vijay Duyeli, uh, Chaitana uh, Joshi, uh, Yun uh, Leo, and I, I want to thank you very much for your attention.